dark matter, you know, people find it a very mysterious concept, but it's just saying that not all the matter in the universe is made up of the same stuff that we're made up of, that the universe that we actually see is made up of. And so the idea is that there's stuff that interacts with gravity, like matter, that is to say it clumps together into galaxies, etc. So there is this stuff called dark matter, but all we know about it is that it interacts with gravity. We don't know any other forces that it carries. Um, so one of the questions is how can we find out more about its fundamental nature? And we thought maybe it, we're thinking about this wrong. Maybe dark matter isn't even just one thing. Maybe most of the dark matter, that is to say the dark matter that surrounds us in the Milky Way halo is one thing, but maybe there's an interacting component. And that could be really interesting. The reason is that if it's interacting, there's a possibility that it can lose energy, lose energy and collapse into a disk. Kind of like the Milky Way disk that you see when you look out in a clear, dry night. And so we thought maybe, um, maybe there's dark matter in a disk. And what we found is that if dark matter particles are heavier than protons, the dark matter disk we would expect to be thinner than the ordinary disk. So the upshot is that we had a theory that naturally predicted the existence, or the possibility at least, of a thin dark matter disk in the midplane of our Milky Way. Now, how does this connect to dinosaurs? We really know that the extinction 66 million years ago is connected to an enormous rock. And when I say enormous, it's like 10 to 15 kilometers big. Um, maybe the size of Madrid, I don't know traveling at uh, 30 kilometers per second that hit the Earth. So that was an enormous amount of energy and creating huge disasters, uh, fires, tidal waves, earthquakes, you name it, every disaster happened. And so the question is, was this just random or was there some physics that triggered it that we can identify? And so the idea is maybe um, the stuff there is really far away, so it's very weakly bound. So if you had even a small trigger, like a small kick, um, you could kick something out of the solar system or have it come hurtling towards Earth. So if we have this thin dark matter disk, it means that every time you pass through this dark matter disk, you have the possibility of having this extra gravitational kick, which could in principle um, cause something to come down and hit the Earth. And that was our idea. And actually, if you match um, the existing crater record, you find that it actually matches very well with this extinction that happened 66 million years ago. If the dark matter disk idea is right, we will actually know about it um, within the next few years, or decade at most. And there's something called the Gaia satellite, which was launched by the European Space Agency. I believe a lot of work is going on in Spain on this project as well. And it will study a billion stars in the Milky Way, their position and velocity very accurately. And if we do that, we can actually learn about the gravitational potential. So we can learn about the distribution of matter and hopefully in the process, the distribution of dark matter. Of course, you know, I'd love to see more precise observations come along. There's something proposed called Thea, which would be really great, which will do even more small scale measurements. Um, of course, I'd like to see high energy colliders go to even higher energies. I mean, it's not that I don't think there's physics out there or the interesting things to discover. The question is whether we're going to actually go ahead and do it. So how does this work affect our understanding of the universe? It's a good question. Um, you know, part of what we're trying to do is just find out what dark matter is. So what we're looking for is structure in galaxies, for example, that indicates that dark matter has some interactions. One possibility is this dark matter disk, which there are actually observations that will tell us about. And other possibilities are just matter gets distributed differently than you would predict according to the simplest dark matter model. Um, you know, it's not just what dark matter teaches me. I'd like to think what, you know, we can learn from dark matter for everyone. I think there's a lot of just amazing analogies about the way we think about dark matter to the way we treat social or political things, you know. We still tend to trust much more what we can see directly in our daily lives. But, you know, most of the universe, I mean, it's, it's measured in terms of energy, is made of dark matter. So we should take that a little more seriously. We live at a time where probably we can develop technology to test a lot of the ideas. 
Um, it's not guaranteed that we will build things, that we will go to the energies we need to with particle colliders, that we'll do the measurements in enough detail to test some of these dark matter ideas. Um, but as a theorist, and particularly as a theorist who likes to think about abstract theory, but also how our observations are made, one of the challenges I have is to think how much information we can extract from existing and proposed experiments or observations and see, can we do a little bit more? Can we push them farther, further than we thought we could? And that's an important question. Um, you know, it's possible we won't find out the answers. Um, that's a risk we take, but we're not going to find out if we don't look, that's for sure. Vodafone One, el todo en uno de última generación.